welcome welcome to a little poetry reading with the fuzzy family uh, Mimi's here taking care of the Bob Bears who are both in attendance this time and so is Saki for the moment and so we uh, grabbed a few <coughs> books of poetry yeah and I think we're gonna start with uh, Toy Dairy Colt and uh, see if uh, we can find one that's appropriate. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to read this one. This is uh, titled Two Poems. And it's on page 37. The, the uh, um, title of the book is Tender. You ready? Settled in? Okay. So two poems, the first of which is called Peripheral. Maybe it's a bat's wings at the corner of your eye, right where the eyeball swivels into its pocket. But when the brown of your eye turns where you thought the white saw, there's only air and gold light, reality, as your mother defined it, milk, no milk. Not for years did you learn the word longing, and only then did you see the bat. Just the fringe of its wings beating, its back in a heavy black cloak. Yeah. And that one's for Bat, who lives in uh, Brantford with uh, uh, Nikki and Sarah. <clears throat> this one's titled Bird. You're a little bit more interested in this one. The second in the two poems found on page 38 of Tender Bird. The secret is not to be afraid, to pour the salt, letting your wrist be free. There is almost never too much. It sits on top of the skin like a little crystal casket. Under it, the bird might imagine another life, one in which it is grateful for pleasing, can smell itself cooking, the taste of carrots, onions, potatoes stewed in its own juice, and forget the dreams of blood coursing out of its throat like a river. Now I will read some more poems to the newly formed vegetarians that are listening. <coughs> uh, yeah, I know. This one is... Uh, a chapbook by John Kennedy uh, entitled uh, How to Be a Witness, 15 poems. And uh, <coughs> I, uh, I just really like the title. It reminds, reminds me of uh, uh, Turia uh, and uh, How to Be a Witness just sounds like uh, fantastic description of meditation, of Samswan, of um, the art and the practitioner living within it. So uh, I'm trying to find one that has a title that seems appropriate to the um, fuzzies in attendance, and that title did not seem to be. Uh, so how about this one? This one mentions uh, a town right near us, right in the beginning. So this is page four of John Kennedy's scrap, uh, chapbook, and it's titled, An Hour Into Spring. And we're just newly into spring now. In this fog, the 7 a.m. to New Haven sounds like distress. I won't go in to work. Houses slip in and out of sight. Ghost ships. If I wait, a blue jay will come shouting. Do it. Do it for all of us planning our mutinies. Only my two-year-old and I are celebrating as two turkey vultures ride in like a cleanup crew and earthworms resurrect what's left of themselves. Haven't I fought years of disbelief to see a morning like this return when anything could be grafted to mist and air? The world swimming away this street holding its breath, this hour into spring. 
and not to hear winter calling up to my window like the old rag and junk man of my childhood with his pennies from my parents' used life. There's only this morning, it's fog and earthworms and distress to build a life by. So the, uh, the first one was uh, Toy Dericot, Tender. And uh, this is John Kennedy's How to Be a Witness. And uh, now I'm going to pick up this one, which has a, a place of honor. Uh, so this was a, uh, I think a free little book. Um, and maybe it was for sale, but I think it was free uh, from Starbucks. And um, this one kind of reminds me of my... Uh, uh, discerning and prejudicial and opinionated mind. Like, well, that's not going to have poems in it. Uh, and that's like saying that graffiti won't be beautiful. And this does have poems in it. Now, do they click for me? Do they work for me? Do they resonate? I don't know. I'd say the odds are the same as any other book. And, uh, so this is, uh, uh, it's called Poems from the Coffee Lands. And I've opened to page 19 where it says Ethiopia. You want to see? Yeah. And uh, this one is uh, written by Kifil Bantayehu. Kifil Bantayehu. And it's titled Self. Self-respect. Self-discipline. Self-loathing, self-conscious, self-defense, self-control, self-help, self-pity. Can I think of anything else but myself? And so we sit in judgment or walk off in judgment. He's such a fan of the selfless that he left. Thank you, Saki. And uh, this one uh, doesn't have an author, probably there may be an editor, but I expect it's uh, the Corporation of Starbucks. And it's Poems from the Coffee Lands. And uh, we'll see if there is a... Yeah, where it would normally say the editor, it says gathered by Starbucks. Uh, so, <coughs> and I'm just going to read a second one from the same. And uh, so I've opened a page 13. And this is Kenya. <clears throat> and um, this is by Misari Kitemugo. And it's titled, I Want You to Know. We're done with the self stuff if you want to come back. He may think I'm a stupa and he's circumambulating me now. I want you to know how carefully I watered the tender shoots you planted in my little garden. Flowers now adorn the ground. The fruits are ripe. Come build a strongly woven basket and bring with you also the finest palm wine that your expert tapping can brew. We must feast and wine to the small hours of our short days together. Joy and love shall be our daily harvest songs. And so that's um, poems from the coffee lands. What's that? Oh, Harris, did you pick another one for us to read from? Okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, that's interesting. You chose the book titled Horse Latitudes. Aha, uh -huh. okay, well, kind of makes sense. Probably should have seen that coming. So you've chosen Horse Latitudes, Paul Muldoon's 
work and uh, apparently you had uh, your hoof on this page so um, I am not sure if this is a series of short poems or like an epic poem that's broken <clears throat> so I'm gonna look for one that I can clearly distinguish if that's okay so that uh, without my having uh, curated this we still end up with uh, something that's sensible okay this one looks a little longer but um, <coughs> in Kennedy's book he mentioned the uh, the uh, the flying birds the turkey vultures and this one uh, says turkey buzzards and that's the title so that's what we're gonna do is that all right so this is turkey buzzards uh, Paul Muldoon <coughs> horse latitudes all right Settle in. Come here, Bob Bears. This is going to be a little bit of a longer one. Yeah, it's a little longer one. You guys like this really warm lap? It's recently vacated. <laughs> yep. Okay. Turkey buzzards. They've been so long above it all, those two petals, so steeped in style, they seem to stall in the kettle simmering over the town dump or better still the neon flashed x-rated rump of fresh roadkill courtesy of the interstate that eisenhower would overtake in the home straight by one horsepower the kettle where it all boils down to the thick scent of death a scent of such renown it's given vent to the idea buzzards can spot a deer carcass a mile away smelling the rot as once Marcus Aurelius wrinkled his nose at a gas leak from the great sewer that ran through Rome to the Tiber, then went searching out through the gloam. One subscriber to the other view that the rose, full-blown, antique. Its no-frills rough, the six-foot shrug of its swing wings, the theologians and the thugs twin triumphings, in a buzzard's shaved head and snood, Buzz, buzz, buzzy, it's logic in all likelihood somewhat fuzzy. Would ever come into focus, it ever deign to dispense his hocus-pocus in that same vein, as runs along an inner thigh to where to write the buzzard vouchsafes not to shy away from shite. It's mission not to give a miss to a bete noir all roly-poly full of piss and vinegar, trying rather to get to grips with the grommet of the gut setting its tin snips to that grommet in the spray painted hind's hind gut and making a sweeping to right a sweeping cut that's so blasé it's hard to imagine dear sis why others shrink from the sight of a soul in bliss so in the pink from another month in the red of the shambles like a rose in over its head among brambles unflappable in its belief its error rot on which the ark would come to grief, abjuring that Marcus Aurelius humbug about what springs from earth, succumbing to the tug of its heartstrings. Reported to live past fifty as you yet may, dear sis, perhaps growing your hair, your hair in requital. Here you go, buddy. Here you go. Yeah, the bob bears moved off. Though briefly, of whatever tears at your vitals, learning perhaps from the nifty, nay thrifty way, these buzzards are given to stoop and take their ease by letting their time-chastened poop fall to their knees. Till they're almost as bright with lime as their night roost, their poop containing an enzyme that's known to boost their immune systems, should they prong themselves on small bones in a cerebral cortex at no small cost to their well-being, sinking fast in the deer crypt, buzzards getting the hang at last of being stripped of their command of the vortex, while having lost their common touch. They've been so long above it all. And that's Harris's choice, apparently. Yeah, thank you for coming back, buddy. That's very nice of you. And that's Paul Muldoon from... Uh, volume entitled Horse Latitudes. <gasps> Look at Ursula. Yeah. 
This is Ur Ursula K. Le Guin. What do you think about that? This is her volume, So Far So Good. And we have opened here to a uh, half of 108, page 54. Look at that. Now, I don't know if the title... Yeah, it's interesting. It seems like there's like double titles on a bunch of these. So I'm not sure if it's a chapter title and then a title of a poem, which comprises the whole chapter. But I'll read both words. And uh, so the first word on the page is waking, just like you've done. Yeah. You did that. And the title, I think, or the next word, larger font, is C word. So we have at the top, waking C word. Foam on the low waves. Morning dreams go drifting out with the tide of light, vanishing as bubbles do, beings of air and water. Sea foam, my memory, is also evanescent, spindrift from wave crests, white manes of the white horses blown by the land wind seaward. Dreams, memories, all becoming immaterial, the self unselving, gone adrift on the same tide. What did you think about that? Was that pretty good? Would you like another Ursula? All right, we're gonna read another Ursula. Do you wanna tell me which one? Oh, did you make a choice with your tail? That was pretty good. <clears throat> so this is uh, page 79. Where the ways grew narrow. Where the ways grew narrow. And for a kitty, that means where the ways grew narrow, the kitty still squirts through. Doesn't matter how narrow the opening. They still go through. Where the ways grew narrow, there above the sea, tall flowers of yarrow brushed against my knee. All I have kept from a time of sorrow, a cold twilight and the white yarrow. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Fuzzies. Everybody did very good. You guys want to take a bob? A little bow for bob bears? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, good job. Thank you, Mimi.